Welcome back. Questions of national security persisting this morning after Sunday marked the second assassination attempt on former President Trump in 10 weeks. The 45th president facing domestic and international threats to his life. Just yesterday, a Pakistani national with alleged ties to Iran pled not guilty to plotting a murder for hire against U.S. politicians here on U.S. soil. Senator Chuck Grassley released FBI records showing Iranian-backed actors seeking to assassinate the former president and other American political figures in retaliation of the killings of Qasem Soleimani. Joining me now is Fox News senior strategic analyst and chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, General Jack Keane. General, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for weighing in on all of these important issues. How does this look on the world stage? What is your uh, reaction to these Iranian-backed actors? Well, I think just dealing with uh, President Trump, certainly the fact that there's two legitimate attempts to, to, to assassinate the former president and a nation state has posed a credible threat against that president, uh, I think the fact that uh, an, assa an assailant was able to get within hundreds of meters of the president twice, once obviously successfully shooting him, and the second time credit the Secret Service with their surveillance and their quick response, but it begs the question, how could somebody even get that close to the president once again? What is the level of protection this president has? I mean, obviously, you have to adjust to the situation President Trump is facing. There are three—there have been three threats against him, the nation-state and two others, and they have to adjust to that reality. And, and whatever it takes to protect this president has to be done. Certainly, you would expect the level of protection to be something similar to the serving president of the United States. And look, at a golf course is a tough place to secure. They're all very large, obviously, in landscape. But president has been playing golf since Eisenhower. Yeah. I suspect the Secret Service has figured out how to do this. Yeah. Uh, so th this review is important to determine the level of protection. I think we know what's going to happen. The Secret Service is going to say, we don't have enough resources. Well, we got to fix this problem and fix yeah. it quickly to make certain and we're providing the, the protection that's necessary. Yeah, I, I think this is a really important point that you're making, General, because, you know, yesterday we heard from the Secret Service uh, officials and they said, well, you know, the whole golf course was not protected because he's not a sitting president. He's a former president. Well, you would think that that's not the way you set levels of protection. You set levels of protection based on the level of the threat. And clearly the threat is much more than former presidents elsewhere. The threat is real and the threat has risen. So you would think that that's how the Secret Service wants to set the level of protection, based on the level of the threat. But they're saying, well, he wasn't a sitting president. But I want to get your take on, on, a, on an even bigger issue here. Potentially, and that is what's happening in foreign affairs in this country relative to the rest of the world, particularly our ad uh, adversaries. Vladimir Putin ordered the Russian army to become the second largest army in the world, only after China's, which is 1.5 million strong. Uh, when I, I mean military, not just army. China and Russia holding the largest war game since the Soviet era, wrapping up a week of joint air and naval drills. The Russian Defense Ministry confirming another joint training operation will begin, including 90,000 troops, 400 warships and submarines, 120 aircraft across multiple oceans. The State Department sounding the alarm on Chinese support for Russia, saying Beijing has crossed a line, providing, quote, very substantial support to replenish the Kremlin's military stockpiles. Xi Jinping confirmed he is visiting Russia next month for the BRICS economic summit. This is his second visit since Russia invaded Ukraine. But, General, I mean, how nervous or scared should we be by the fact that China and Russia have serious plans, okay? Russia says it wants to be the largest military behind China's. Now, we know that the U.S. is the largest military, but China is, is investing big time, as you've made the point many times. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The Congressional Commission and I was on for 20 months, bipartisan, delivered a report a few weeks ago that laid this out in some degree of detail. And, and the fact is that China, Russia, Iran and North Korea collectively are presenting the most significant threat to the United States since we have faced in World War II. And that's, that's a heck of a statement to be making. And we believe we have the evidence to back it up. And here you're just displaying more of the evidence. 
They are dead serious. They have become more aggressive in the last three or four years. And why is that? Because they believe the United States is politically weak and can be taken advantage of. And they're seeking opportunity yes, here. This exercise is obviously helping to train them in how they would actually fight together. But it's also sending a loud message to our allies and partners in the region that they are going to impose their will. And they have been doing that in the Indo-Pacific right. region. Obviously, Putin is doing it in Europe. Iran is doing it in the Middle East. And we got to wake up. This is dead serious. This is a dangerous threat. It's real, and it's out there, and they're coming for us. And yeah. we've got to make certain that we're confronting them. And what do we do? We have defense budgets that are flatlined for inflation. Does that make any sense when we're right. so far behind in our capacity matched against theirs? It makes no sense right. whatsoever and in terms of what we're doing. Well, and, and the administration will not tell the American people how serious this threat really is. Yeah, very, very disturbing, sir. And, you know, Newt Gingrich had a good idea the other day saying just focus on defense spending right now. Okay, let's get through the budget deadline by putting out real numbers on defense spending and making sure that this is the appropriate number, given, again, the level of threat, right? Talking about the level of threat for President Trump, the level of threat for America right now, and it is getting worse and more uh, concerning when you see these actors, China and Russia, getting closer and closer. And then, of course, there's Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared a new goal of returning tens of thousands of displaced Israelis to the north of the country after evacuations near the border with Lebanon. Israel's defense minister said that the only way is through military action, General, and a ceasefire will become less likely if Hezbollah continues to tie itself to Hamas. The U.S. is warning Israel not to escalate the fight with Hezbollah, though, reportedly saying that it would set off a broader regional conflict and worsen the conflict in Gaza. Yemen's Houthi rebels, you know, claimed that they shot down another American-made MQ-9 Reaper drone yesterday, one day after the terrorist group fired a missile at central Israel. The missile did not strike its target, and no casualties were reported. But Israel says it tried to down it with its air defense systems, but the missile slipped through with partial damage, General. So we've got that situation worsening as well. Yeah, and what's happening here, so our viewers understand, on October the 8th, one day after the massacre and barbaric actions of Hamas on October the 7th, Hezbollah began to fire into northern Israel. And they've been firing into northern Israel with artillery, mortars, rockets and missiles every single day since that time. That has forced the evacuation of some 80,000 Israelis that live in that area. And the government is taking care of most of them in terms of financing temporary lodging. But the reality is, while a diplomatic solution has been attempted for months and months here so that there would be a ceasefire in the north, the Israeli cabinet has had to deal with this issue, and they, they have voted that at, if there is no diplomatic solution, in other words, where Hezbollah will pull their resources back across right. the Latani River and no longer pose a threat so that the Israelis can move back into the region, if that doesn't happen yep. and time is running out, the, the Isra Israeli administration has made the decision that they will have to conduct military operations to force Hezbollah out. If they don't do that, Maria, then Hezbollah has redefined the border of Israel. Right. And, and that cannot stand. And, right. that, and we wouldn't want that to stand in our country, and Israelis are not going to let that stand either. And of everybody's course. wringing their hands and saying, well, no, we don't want the war expanded. But this is on the back of the Iranians who control Hezbollah. They call the shots here. And all they have to do is issue one order and tell them to yeah. move back, and they will move back. Yeah. But if they don't move back voluntarily, the Israelis have no choice but yeah. conduct a military operation and force them back. Right. I mean, the U.S. likes to tell Israel what to do, and yet there's no deterrence whatsoever from the U.S. when it comes to Iran. It's absolutely outrageous. General, we so appreciate your insights, as always, sir. Thank you. Great talking, Maria, as always. And to you.